Hi, and welcome to BFG Photography. Now, before you even ask what BFG stands for, let me just explain. It's my initials. Yes, I know that's kind of boring. I hope the rest of the video won't be quite so boring. I think it'll be pretty interesting because today I'd like to talk about a relatively new function in Photoshop called Delete and Fill Selection. Now, this new function can be used when you have a selection you'd like to fill with the background pixels. You might want to do this, for example, when you're trying to blur the background of a photo and you don't want the subject to bleed into the background. Uh, I think it works a little better than using content-aware fill. And to find out exactly how much better it works, keep watching after this brief video intro. So, delete and fill selection to the rescue. Here's how you can use it to help you blur the background of a photo. And for this demonstration, I'll use this photo of an American Avocet. Okay, this is not a bad photograph, but the background is a little bit distracting, so I'd like to blur it just a little bit more. The first step is to use the Select Subject function to select just the bird. While this is not a video about how to select subjects, I do want to point out something important about the Select Subject function. If you either click W on the keyboard or go over to the Quick Selection tool on the left pane, you'll see a Select Subject button at the top in the uh, toolbar. Just to the right of that is a drop-down that lets you select between the subject being selected on the device for quicker results or in the cloud for more detailed results. Now, I prefer to use the cloud, and because of that, I've set that up as a default. And to do that, you go into Edit, Preferences, Image Processing, and select Subject cloud for detailed results. So that is the default. So now when I click on select subject, I wait a few seconds and I'll see a message indicating the processing is occurring in the cloud. It takes a few seconds and there is the selection. Now one thing you'll notice is it did pick up part of the reflection because that looks so much like the subject. I don't want the reflection selected so I'm just going to delete it from the selected area. Now I've got just the bird selected. The next step is to press Control J on a PC or Command J on a Mac to create a new layer which contains just the bird. In fact, I'm going to rename that layer Bird. I'll hide that layer and go back to the original. On this layer, I want to delete the bird and fill its space with the water and the rocks from the background. But before we use the new Delete and Fill Selection tool uh, to accomplish this, I'd like to try Content Aware Fill first and see what happens. So now we press Control or Command and click on the bird layer to select the bird. Select Content Aware Fill either from the Edit drop-down or by right-clicking and selecting Content Aware Fill. Now you can change these options if you'd like and maybe remove more of the bird and so forth. It doesn't change things much if we do that, but let's do it anyway. We'll just remove the bird, leaving mainly just water and rocks for the selection. I will click OK, and I'll click Control D to delete the selection. But you can see, if I zoom in a little more closely here, there's a definite outline of the bird that has been left behind. And that could impact the results when we're using a blur function on the background. And also note that the area where the bird's head was previously is now filled with water instead of rock, which would have been, I think, a bit more natural. So let's back that out. And we'll use Delete and Fill Selection to see if we get better results. 
Now this time I'm going to right click on the bird and instead of content aware fill, I'm going to click on delete and fill selection. I'll wait a few seconds. Wow! That made the bird almost disappear entirely and the fill area looks a lot more natural and I don't have the outline of the bird. So really all that's left to do to complete the picture is to bring the bird back in. But before we do that, we want to blur the background area. Now with a picture of a bird on the water or on the ground, um, many other situations, you'll notice that at the bottom of the photo, you've got areas that are closer to the camera. At the top of the photo, there's areas that are farther away. So we'd like the areas farther away and those closer to be blurred while the areas that are about the same distance as the bird should stay in focus. So to accomplish this, we're going to use the gradient tool to create a gradient mask to gradually phase in the blur in the background and in the foreground. First, we'll click D on the keyboard to create the default black foreground and white background. Now we click G to make sure we have the gradient tool selected. In the drop down for the gradient tool, under basics, select foreground to background. Make sure to select the linear gradient. And I like to use the perceptual method, which I think phases in in a more natural manner than the linear method. Once we have all those selections taken care of, hit either Q on the keyboard or the quick mask button to enter the quick mask mode. And notice that the background layer now turns red, indicating that we are in quick mask mode. Now let's select an area maybe a few feet behind where the bird was to begin the gradient. I'll click there and drag upwards a bit. And that will create a gradient mask that will phase in the blur. Now I'll click Q or the quick mask button again to exit quick mask mode and I like to click Control H to hide the mask. Now the next step is to go filter blur and I like to use lens blur when I'm blurring the background. Lens blur. Make sure the preview um, option is selected. Without the preview button selected, I can't see the impact of the blur filter. With the preview button selected, I can see the impact of the blur. And probably the most important adjustment here is the radius, which determines how much blur there will be. If I reduce the radius, I see just a very small impact of the blur. If I increase the radius by quite a bit, I see a much more significant blur impact. So um, when you're doing this on your own photos, you can adjust the radius to get the desired amount of blur. For this particular photo, I'm going to leave the radius at 80, which is a pretty high amount of blur, just to demonstrate that we're still not going to get any bleed from the subject. And once I'm satisfied with the amount of blur, I click OK. And now we'd like to do the same thing to the foreground. Click on Control D to delete the current selection. Click on Q or the quick mask icon to get into the quick mask mode. Click on the water, which would be a few feet or so in front of the bird. Click and drag down this time to create a mask that will gradually phase in the blue filter in the front. Click on the quick mask icon again or the Q. Control H. Let's go filter blur lens blur. Now you could change the amount of blur here, but I'm just going to leave the blur in the front portion of the bird at 80 as well. Click on OK. And we've now blurred the pixels that are closer to the camera and farther away from the camera. All we have to do now is add the bird back in and check out the results. 
That's what the final photo looks like after applying the blur. Now we can check that against the original. I'm going to right click on the most recent history state, click new snapshot, and let's call it after blur. I'll scroll back up to the top so I can see the after blur snapshot versus the original. Original, after blur. I think we accomplished what we set out to do. The blur looks pretty good. And if I zoom in and check the area around the bird, you can see there's no bleeding of the subject into the background. So that's how you can use delete and fill selection to help you blur the background of a photo. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.